Hey everyone, this is Adam Bergman, founder and CEO of IRA Financial. Welcome to another episode of Ad Bits, where I will be sharing bits of knowledge about self-directed retirement. If you want to learn more, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on social media. Just search IRA Financial. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Ad Bits. I'm Adam Bergman tax attorney and founder of IRA Financial. And on today's ad bits, I want to talk about solo 401k profit sharing strategies. So this is a subject that I actually should have done an earlier podcast on, um, and I should have done a lot more writing on. In fact, I don't even have much in my books or um, on any prior podcasts on this particular strategy that's very unknown but very exciting. If you have a business, whether you have a solo 401k or not attributable to it, and you have no full-time employees other than the owners or their spouses, you're eligible for a solo K, right? So if you don't have one now, you can grab one. And we'll talk about why you may want to grab one. First, obviously the maximum contributions, right? You can go 58,000 or 64,500 if you're over 50. Now, that number is broken down into two components. It's the employee deferral, which is 19,500, 26,000 if you're over 50. And that's for 2020 and 2021, actually. And that can be in pre-tax or Roth, so long as your plan document allows for it. And that's essentially a dollar for dollar from your compensation. So for example, if you earned 25,000 bucks, you're under 50, you can put in 19,500. Okay, and that's net of Social Security and Medicare. So it's a deduction if you want it as a pre-tax contribution from a federal tax deduction standpoint, or you can do it in Roth if your plan allows for it and it's after tax money that goes in, but the money will grow without tax. And then there's the employer profit sharing contribution component, which is essentially either 20% of your comp if you're a Schedule C or a single member LLC taxpayer, or it's 25% of your W-2 if you're a corp or a guaranteed payment if you get a guaranteed payment from a partnership. Okay, and then when you add both those components up, the 19.5 or the 26 from the employee deferral standpoint, and the 20 and 25% of your comp, whether you're a single member LLC, 20%, sole prop, or 25% if you're a W-2, when you add those components up, it cannot go above 58,000 or 64,500 if you're over 50. Now we talked about the employee deferrals and they're generally individual. It's a individual limitation, no matter how many plans you're associated with, you're capped at that 19.5 or 26. The employer profit sharing contribution is actually plan-based. So if you have two businesses and they're not part of one control group, meaning you own less than 80% of both businesses or they're not affiliated, you can technically do multiple profit sharings and even go above that 58 or 64.5. Now, what about if you have multiple partners in your business? So let's say it's you and two other people or one other person. Okay, one person wants to max out, do 20 or 25% profit sharing, but the other partner doesn't for whatever reason. Now, it's not very common. Generally, most partners from a retirement standpoint will kind of do the same thing from a profit sharing uh, perspective at least. So the employee deferral, each partner can do what they want. You can put in zero, put in a dollar, 15,000, 19,500, whatever you want. That's 100% elective. Then the profit sharing, again, is based off your comp. Doesn't matter if you didn't put money in or not. It's based off how much you made from the business as either W-2 or under Schedule C. And that generally is the same percentage for all partners. That's what most people do, right? That would probably cause some partners um, squabbles and um, debate why one partner gets more than the other, or that's not fair. So generally that doesn't occur, but there are situations where a partner says, Hey, I need more taxable income. You know, I, I got to pay for a, a wedding or a, I got to buy a new house, or I just want more cash. Um, I don't care about my retirement account this year. I need the cash. So in, in those cases, the partners may say, okay, we each made a hundred G's. I'm going to do a 25% profit sharing because we're an S corp, two owners, no employees. We have a solo K. We each can do 25K profit sharing. I want it. I want the tax deduction. You don't want it. Okay. I'll give you just the $25,000 in taxable income and I'll give you a zero profit sharing contribution. So the question is, can you do it? 
And believe it or not, the answer is yes, so long as your plan documents allow for it. And I, I tend to send that, say that often because, again, the plan is like the Bible. It, it tells you what you can and cannot do, right? The Ten Commandments, you, you can't violate them. Same with the plan. Um, if the plan says you can do it, you can do it. If the plan says you can't do it, you can't do it. So if you have a customized plan like you can get through IRA Financial, you can actually set up a situation through the document where you can have individual allocation groups. Okay, and this is part of your adoption agreement where you have individual, you can elect to do individual allocation groups versus predetermined allocation groups. And in that, pay, in that situation, each individual group can have their own profit sharing percentage. So let's take the example of a Schedule C, single member LLC. Um, in that case, clearly if it's a single member, it's going to be one person, right? It's going to be difficult to have two partners when you have a single member LLC. But let's talk about the S Corp, C Corp, W2. You got multiple partners. You're a real estate firm, accounting firm, law firm, whatever, medical group, and two, three, four partners, and everyone wants to di do different profit sharing contributions. You can do it. Okay. Again, so long as your plan document allows for it, one partner can do 10, the other one 15, the other one zero. It's your choice. Now, this is even cooler. If you're a W-2, what the other partners can do is they can pick up the slack from the partners that didn't make their contribution percentage. So if each one gets 25% and one partner did zero, the other partners could share that 25% contribution. Isn't that cool? So you don't, it actually doesn't go to waste. The other partner gets the cash in their pocket, but the other partners can actually make up for that profit sharing the partner didn't take. So there's a lot of really cool profit sharing strategies if you have partners. If it's just you, then obviously it's just you, right? Whatever you choose, you choose. And you don't have to do any profit sharing. It's 100% elective. Um, it's the business. It's your the business. But if you have partners, again, in most cases, the partners do the same thing. But if you want to be in a situation where you have different groups and different individual allocation groups, so one partner does one percentage, the other partners do the other, um, very cool stuff you can do. And there's a lot of cool strategies um, that you can implement to take advantage of each partner's tax position. And then the excess, what the partner that didn't take the max contribution, um, you guys can you know split it up or the other partner can just take it all uh, as an additional profit sharing contribution. Company will get the deduction and the money will go into the other partner. So again, some this is kind of not widely known. Why? Because most plan documents don't allow this. If you go to Schwab, E-Trade, Vanguard, TD, Fidelity, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, give you a free document, but you're probably not going to get a prof, uh, Roth component. You're not going to get a loan feature of up to 50K. And I can guarantee you're not going to be able to pick your individual allocation groups. Why? Because it's just too complicated. They're just going to give you a standard document. They're not going to customize it because it's free and they just want you to focus on buying their products. They, they're, they're not really interested in, in giving you all the bells and whistles on a plan document. But you know, we are. We have a different strategy. We don't sell investments. We're all about empowerment, letting people take control, and democratizing uh, alternative assets, giving people the ability to do what the IRS allows you to do, which is either pre-tax or uh, Roth and traditional or alternative assets. So really cool strategies. Again, it only works if you have multiple partners and, and one doesn't want or more than one doesn't want to do the contribution percentage that the others do and the others want to max out. You can then piggyback and, and take some of the uh, leftovers that were not uh, allocated to the uh, partner and then use them for yourself, uh, get a tax deduction from the business and also get more money into your retirement account. So there you have it. Um, some profit sharing strategies for uh, your solo 401k. If you are self-employed, uh, all you need is a U.S. business, no full-time employees, which means no one that's a non-owner that works more than a thousand hours during the year. If you satisfy those conditions, then you should start thinking about going solo. It's the best plan for the for the self-employed. You can put away a lot of money, pre-tax or Roth. You can borrow up to 50K. You can do stocks. You can also do alternative assets like real estate, gold, even cryptos. And obviously, you can even do different percentages for profit sharing to go along with your employee deferral. So uh, pretty cool stuff. 
And I hope you guys enjoyed um, the podcast and hopefully you picked up a few things um, on the Solo K. So there you have it. I appreciate uh, you guys listening. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you. Subscribe if you haven't. We drop five videos and three podcasts on YouTube. Um, Two other podcasts, obviously Adam Talks and Ad Mail, which you can pick up anywhere that you listen to your podcasts, whether it's Spotify, Apple, SoundCloud, or anywhere else. And I really appreciate you guys listening. I've been getting some really good feedback. So I promise I'll keep doing my part and keep trying to find uh, interesting uh, self-directed retirement tax investment topics to um, talk about. And hopefully uh, we can learn from each other. And uh, again, I I do learn from this stuff. I educate myself. I prepare uh, pretty diligently for these uh, podcasts. So it's actually a win-win. Hopefully you guys are picking some stuff up and and I certainly am. Uh, um, I, I'm not perfect. I don't know everything. Um, you can ask my wife. <laughs> she'll she'll tell you I pretty much know nothing, but I kind of know this stuff pretty well. But every week that I prepare for a new topic, I always learn a little bit more. So, you know, I just thank you for, for listening and, and letting me uh, learn more and educate myself and, and all of you and, and make us all better retirement investors and hopefully uh, wealthier at the end of the day. So cheers. Take care, everyone. Be safe and talk to everyone again next week.